This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. 2021 has been a great year for us. Yay, finally, we were in the right sectors. The right areas rebounded. Our patience and discipline paid off. So we were in some of the hottest sectors of the year even. So energy basically remains the best performing industry this year. It started out red hot at the beginning of the year, basically held most of those gains, uh, had a little bit of shakiness over the summer, which was a buying opportunity, maybe a little bit of shakiness here at the end of the year, another buying opportunity, but overall it has held on to its hotness. But some other value areas have also remained hot. Those include the banks, retail and agriculture, all of those not too far behind energy. So the retailers, um, one of the hot areas, have been selling off in this growth stock sell-off, but they mostly remain cheap. So I'm keeping my eye, eye on those for some maybe some buying opportunities as well. But who are some of the value superstars of 2021? Are they still cheap heading into 2022? Or are they value traps now? Is the worst worst behind them, you know, or the, the best behind them and the worst still to come? Um, should we not be buying some of the value superstars from 2021? Or are they still uh, maybe having some room to run here into 2022? So let's dive right in because a lot is going on with value, as I said, here in 2021. So I'm going to start with energy because as all of you know, I've covered it a lot over the last several years on this podcast. And it's been one of the popular podcasts I've done on whether or not it's been value or value traps. Well, right now, um, all the energy names on the EMP side, the explorers and producers, the oil driller side, they are all uh, values here and not traps. But I can only pick out one, uh, one that did have an extraordinary year here. So it is Diamondback Energy, ticker F-A-N-G, the original Fang getting its revenge this year in 2021, up 119% year to date through December 1st, 2021, as I'm recording this podcast. It's paying a dividend, yielding 1.9%. And I think this one has a big share buyback. I can't keep track of all the companies doing the share buybacks. Some of them have been increasing dividends with their massive free cash flows that are happening right now. Some of them have been doing the dividend plus the share buybacks. So uh, take a deeper dive if you want to know if they're also doing the share buybacks but all of them have been um, increasing that dividend. Some of them have been doing special dividends. I didn't look to see if Diamondback, is it one of them? I'm trying to think, I can't remember now because I've listened to too many conference calls, but some of these are, again, are also doing special dividends. So make sure you go to their investor relations page and check it out to see exactly what you're gonna get on the dividend side and share buyback side with any of the energy stacks. So how cheap is it? PE is still 9.5 and it has a peg of 0.4. So still cheap even with the massive run up in the shares. Why is that? Well, we have to know it's because the E side, the earnings are still on the rise. So in 2020, a horrible year for all the oil companies during the start of the pandemic as demand just crashed and so did oil. So we only see $3.04 in 2020, but here in 2021, expected to make $11.24, up 269%. And then for 2022, another huge gain up to $17.91, up another 59% on the earnings front for next year with revenue up 17%. Now, remember also with the energy uh, producers, to make sure you see what's going on with their hedging programs. Now, because all these companies believe that oil is gonna go higher into 2022, even though we've had this 25% uh, pullback here suddenly in November and December of 2021, but they do expect higher prices in 2022. So they haven't really been hedging that much on uh, the price of oil, 
for 2022, waiting to get better hedging and lock in more of this price. So that's also contributing to the higher earnings that's expected for next year. But that's something you want to check out with your oil company. How much are they hedging um, or are they hedging at all? Because there is at least one that I know of that has no hedges. So um, I'll be covering energy a lot more as we head into 2022 because it still is one of the top uh, sectors going into 2022 for value investors. So keep that in mind. Okay, then we're going to switch over to the banks. Now, I kind of just looked around at a couple of the big cap banks because they have had nice years beating the S&P 500, but I settled on one of the regionals that I like a lot, PNC Financial, ticker PNC. So they're up 33.3% year to date, but the shares have come down off of their highs here um, as we head into December, even though it looks like the Fed may raise sooner than expected on the rates, which helps the banks, but those shares have still come down a bit. So they've gone on sale a bit here, but are still beating the S&P 500 for the year. PE of 13.4, PEG of just 0.8. So still cheap, all the all of them remain cheap. And what does it look like on the earnings? So they um, made $14.67 last year and expected to make, no, they made $16.96 last year, expected to make $14.67 this year. So that's down 13.5%. But some of that is because of um, you know certain government programs that were enacted during the pandemic that helped the banks, those ended. So things have been not so good on the earnings side for the banks this year compared to last year. And then 2022, down another 4.4% to $14.03. But I do think that's going to change as the Fed um, acts in 2022 on interest rates. And the economy should be recovering further in 2022 with a nice year set up for 2022, as we're seeing in the employment numbers already as we head into that year. So right now, these shares are a value trap just because we have the earnings declining into next year. But I do expect it to turn around on PNC and all other banks where it's showing um, you know, a decline into next year. So that's something to watch for all the banks you're investing in. PNC pays a dividend yielding 2.5%. So that's pretty nice little dividend there. Then we're going to switch over to retail. So I chose Dick Sporting Goods because at one point, just before their recent earnings report, the shares were up 150% year to date. Now I could have gone with Macy's because those were up 200%. Uh, at one point this year to date, but I kind of like the Dick story and that outdoor, uh, you know, demand for outdoor goods will continue even on the reopen as we're seeing it has continued. So Dick Sporting Goods ticker DKS year to date is now up only 109, 109%, but that's still pretty, pretty nice. You doubled your money if you bought Dick's to start the year. Shares are still cheap. PE of just 8.1, a peg of 0.6. So uh, these also pay a dividend yielding 1.4%. But what do those earnings look like? It's got to be going up if that PE is so low, right? So in 2020, they made $6.12. 2021, 14.45 is expected, up 136% from last year as we're entering into this really red hot. Um, holiday season, the best ever. So you're really seeing that in those earnings. But next year, expected to be down 27% to $10.51. Still too early for the analysts to really know what might happen next year and whether or not this consumer demand will continue. So they're playing it cautious. It's look a little bit like peak earnings possibly here in 2021. I mean, once you have the best ever Christmas and holiday season, how do you repeat the best ever? Can you? It's very difficult for the retailers to keep doing these numbers year after year after year, unless we have a red hot uh, economy with strong job growth, you know, the stock market remaining elevated, housing prices remaining elevated, so people feel good and are spending at the stores. 
So um, this is something to watch right now. It is a value trap as well, like PNC Financial, but that may not hold, And but we won't know until it reports earnings again after the holiday season. So next year in 2022, all these retailers may pull back some more and may get cheaper on the sphere of peak earnings and supply chain issues and all these other things, and even inflation floating around. But that could be a buying opportunity again on some of these names. So keep them on your watch list, the retailers, and know which ones are among the best of the retailers. Dix is one of the best on the sporting goods side. So you're really seeing that in the shares up 109% year to date. Then we're gonna switch over to the home builders. They came up in my screen almost every week. I ran a value screen and they still remain dirt cheap. However, most of the home builder stocks peaked earlier in the year and have pulled back, except Toll Brothers, ticker T-O-L, the luxury home builder. These shares are still up 49% year to date and they're near their 52 week highs. They're about to report earnings on December 7th. 2021. So if you're listening to this after December 7th, they've already reported, go check out and see what they've done. Um, I'm still expecting another good quarter. All the home builders have reporting stellar quarters, quarter after quarter after quarter. Demand is still there. They're still withholding sales because it's just simply been too hot. They're still raising prices. Their margins were still going up. And now uh, starting probably, maybe we might even see it in this quarter with toll, but certainly by next quarter into 2022, lower lumber prices are finally gonna work their way through their costs because they had already locked in lumber and bought lumber for prior quarters. But now the much lower lumber prices that have fallen from those highs early in 2021, and they've fallen sharply, are going to really impact the margins, but you're gonna have stresses on the margins on labor, land prices, on other items that go into home building, like even copper, um, you know, appliances, flooring, even the drywall prices had gone up. So you gotta look at the whole package, but I'm still expecting good gross margins here improving on these lower lumber prices. But still people concerned about peak earnings with the home builders, but right now, not so much with Toll Brothers. Maybe they think luxury is gonna hold up a little bit better as these prices keep hitting record highs, all-time highs on home new home prices. So what do these shares look like right now before the earnings report? They're up 49% year to date, but the PE is still just 7.1 and they have a peg dirt cheap of just 0.18. So just about 0.2 on the peg. So what does that mean? That's gotta mean the E is rising, right? Just like the other stocks I've talked about today. And yes, it is. So 2020, they made $3.40 in the pandemic year. 2021 expected to make $6.14 of 80%. And then 2022 expected to make 883 up another 43%. That's on the stronger margins. So that's all looking good. No trap here. Toll Brothers pays a dividend, but it's on the lower side for most of the home builders, just 1% on the dividends. They're throwing all their money into buying as much land as they can, especially down there in hot Texas, right? Um, Everybody wants a new hot and the land is available. So they're diving in down there. But this is one I'm going to be tuning into. I own it in the value investor portfolio here at Zach's. We've owned it all year, kind of died out there for a while, but now again is rebounding. Some of the other home builders, not so much. So peak earnings are an issue with the home builders too, but we will see if um, they still got it and uh, what they're saying about the market here as we head into 2022. And keep in mind, as the banks benefit from rising rates, Toll Brothers may not. As those rates rise, mortgage rates will rise too. And will that really slow the housing market? In some cases, some of these home builders might be happy to have it just slow down uh, you know, a, a, a bit here because they just cannot keep up with demand. And that's not good. That leads to 
longer delivery times and higher cancellation rates. So they want to keep their customers happy and maybe just a slower, slightly slower market will allow them to do that. So that's something to keep in mind as well. More higher mortgage rates mean um, slower housing demand. Okay, um, then we're gonna wrap it up with, of course, agriculture, because I've talked about this several times. It's also a value play across many different metrics, including the equipment makers. They have really pulled back. So I'm not gonna talk about one today. That'll have to be on another show. But Deer, Agco are still cheap and looking interesting heading into 2022. But the actual value superstar for 2021 has been on the fertilizer side because fertilizer prices, especially on potash, at new highs, uh, multi-year highs, we'll, we'll say. And uh, that means higher earnings for all the fertilizers. So the one I chose was Mosaic, ticker MOS. They are a potash and phosphate producer, um, one of the big guys. They do pay a dividend yielding 0.9%, but that's not why you're buying it. You're buying it for this earnings growth. So um, we're looking at an interesting earnings outlook, but the shares are dirt cheap. So year to date, these are up 48.5%. The forward PE is now just 6.7. Wow, 6.7 for one of the big fertilizer giants with a peg of 0.96. So right there around one on the peg, that also indicates it has both growth and value. But even though these shares are up 48.5% year to date, and it is a superstar, well outperforming the S&P 500, which is up only about 22% during that time period. Over the last month, Mosaic has pulled back 17.7%. So could be a buying opportunity here, but what does the earnings look like? Um, we're looking at 85 cents for last year in 2020 and that like the energy stocks that was a very nasty year for the fertilizers um as they had a deal with the pandemic and manufacturing under uh covid conditions and and all of that going on and so it was rough but huge rebound here in 2021 with earnings of 500 percent to five dollars and ten cents that's why you're getting the low low PE ratio, right? Because of the big gains. Um, and then you're going to have uh, 2022. What's that looking like? Everybody expects potash and phosphate, all the fertilizers, even the nitrogens to remain in high demand, but there's low inventory. Both the Chinese and Russia, who also manufacture, are have banned exports of some of these fertilizers outside their country at the moment. So what does that do? That it impacts the supply and demand dynamics. So prices are going up because there's too much demand, not enough supply, and the farmers are um, you know, doing well. They're, they're hot too right now, so they need the fertilizers. So for 2022, earnings expected to rise 53% to $7.80. So no trap here with Mosaic and not yet peak earnings, but it is cyclical like the energy stocks are. So you will enter into these cycles when you have record or you know 10 year high potash prices. How long does that last? Well, we know it's gonna last into next year and then we'll see. But that's why with some of these more cyclical stocks, you gotta get in early in the cycle because it only lasts so long before the cycle, you know, wears itself out, the prices reach peak prices and then pull back. Kind of like the semiconductors. We've seen that happen several times in the semiconductors. So fertilizers have been in a bear market for multiple years, finally coming out, but still cheap. And now Mosaic down 17% in the last month might be worth a, a look. I already own several of the fertilizers, both in my value investor portfolio and in my own personal portfolio, or I would be considering Mosaic, but I can't own them all because there's no point because they're all doing the same thing and they're all cheap. So keep that in mind too. Uh, look around in the industry. There's not that many players on the fertilizer side. So I've covered some of them in prior podcasts. I will talk about ag again as we head into 2022 because 
all these areas remain hot. So basically, I just previewed all my shows to start the new year, right? It's going to be energy. It's going to be retail. It's going to be the banks. Could be the home builders. We'll see what's going on with those. And it's going to be agriculture. So the 2021 superstars look like they could continue to be the 2022 superstars for next year. Uh, but we'll soon see, right? We'll take a deeper dive as we enter into 2022. But for now, it's been fun being a value investor in 2021. Finally, we had our time. We have our time in the sun. And so um, keep looking, keep digging around some of these cheap stocks because they're not all value traps here. And many of them have entered into what I consider to be new cyclical bull markets. So this should be good going into 2022. So look for weakness and um, or you know buy new positions in some of these or add to your positions in some of these. And the good news is you're also getting a dividend with all of these stocks today, surprisingly. Some of them, um, you know, not sky high, but getting a dividend nevertheless, so you get a little extra bonus on top of it. So that's good to see too. So let me recap the stocks we talked about today. These are the value superstars, or at least some of them, they represent their industries this year on the value superstars. So the first one was in the oils, Diamondback Energy, Fang. So Fang may have died with Metaverse, now uh, its new name, but the original Fang is still around and still uh, is now red hot and crushing it. So what does that say? I don't know. It could be a sign. Uh, ticker F-A-N-G for Diamondback. Then we had uh, Banks. Look around, find your favorite bank. It could be a regional, it could be a community, it could be one of the big guys. Um, I really like the community banks right now, but there's like hundreds of those you could choose from. So uh, dig around, but the one I chose for this show, PNC Financial, ticker PNC, big regional bank with a dividend yielding 2.5%. Then we had Dick Sporting Good has pulled back off of its recent highs, uh, but still cheap. And it all remains to be seen. How strong will the consumer be next year? That's Dick's DKS. Toll Brothers, also red hot, up 49% year to date. Home builders aren't uh, going anywhere, but it's just a matter of how much will it slow on rising mortgage rates for next year. Ticker TOL for Toll Brothers. And then wrapping it up with the fertilizers, Mosaic is my choice today. Up big, but down 17% in the last month could be a buying opportunity, ticker MOS. And as always, you want to make sure you get all the podcasts because this is the end of the year now. And I'm going to be covering what we should be looking for as we head into 2022 because I basically just also covered that on this podcast. But this is the fun time of the year and especially coming off of this excellent year for value investing and for our portfolios. If we were in any of these areas, we're doing pretty good this year. So I'm expecting better things even possibly for value next year. And I am having an easy time finding good value stocks. So you wanna be sure to subscribe, get us anywhere. We're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music. You can get us with the Zach's Market Edge podcast, two for one on SoundCloud. Search over there for uh, Zach's Market Edge and you will find us on SoundCloud. But get us anywhere you can get podcasts and I'll see you again next week with some more exciting value stacks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.